My name is John Walter and I'm the curator of Shonky, the Aesthetics of Awkwardness, which is a project that has grown out of a collaboration with Hayward Turing, who run an open call every few years to discover proposals for exhibitions that may not happen otherwise. And I proposed Shonky uh, having thought a lot about how my own work as an artist was awkward and may not fit into given models and wanting to flesh out why this might be the case by looking at how others had addressed the same issue. So for those of you that don't know the word shonky, this may be a regional term. I was in Hull recently and this word uh, is very well known there. It might be an Australian word. It might come from a Yiddish word meaning a peddler. But the word shonky as I was growing up meant something that just did the job. It might be the piece of paper that the waitress puts under the table to straighten the table. Or it might be the thing that you buy and is broken, but somehow still functions perfectly. And this could be a pejorative, but in the case of the exhibition, it's absolutely a critical term for rethinking uh, a certain process within art making. And it's a positive thing. It's a positive force that can be redeployed in the context of slickness and fabrication culture which has been an ongoing concern of art of the past 30-40 years. Shonky is an umbrella term for bringing together artists who haven't been considered within the context of one another before and that includes people from different parts of the world for example Louise Fishman who's very well known in the States but isn't so well known in the UK and she is a senior artist making paintings that draw on an abstract expressionist tradition but redeploy it within certain types of feminist critique and agitprop and uh, protest culture. And it's interesting to think about her work alongside queers of her generation but based in the UK like Andrew Logan and Dougie Fields who are doing something completely different. And then we can jump to from Dougie to someone like Jacoby Satterwhite in the States again, but much younger. Both working with digital imaging, both working with queer subjects, uh, sometimes in very similar ways, sometimes not. Always bringing the hand into digital processes and allowing for their authorship to show, but through certain types of cack-handedness, either deliberately or accidentally so, certainly using a kind of pictorial space that is ruptured and involves juxtaposition and floating of different voices, pictorial voices upon one another. And that becomes a theme within the exhibition as a whole. So in the upper gallery, you enter to the vista of uh, two brightly coloured walls, a chroma key blue wall and a chroma key green wall that are broken up by two curtains which are printed versions of Hundert Wasser buildings and these become the way of organising a series of works. First of all you encounter Tim Spooner's work, he is a sculptor and performer, in this scenario he isn't performing with the work, these are structures that are motorised, kinetic sculptures that dance and jostle, they're very fragile and they sometimes collapse under their own weight. Then we go into a new piece that Justin Favela has made called Floor Nachos, which is a pinata version of cheese falling onto nachos, which draws on a tradition of Klaus Oldenburg and other sculptors, but is repurposed through certain discussions around uh, identity politics and Latino culture. Then we turn and see a series of paintings by Louise Fishman that display a range of marks that are scraped and poured and splattered and painted. And sometimes the layering of them conforms or plays with the rules of painting and does things backwards. And they're paintings that are built up slowly over time and are employing certain awkward grids then there's a, a whole realm of Andrew Logan's sculptures, different portrait busts, references to Divine, the drag queen, and also positioning his work in relation to a New Zealand artist, Kate Lepper. She has a hanging piece, 
and she, her sculpture is packed with various remnants of the packing foam and bubbles that a lot of the work has been shipped in. Her work addresses recycling via certain feminist traditions coming out of people like Judy Chicago. It's a hybrid form of making sculpture. There's a Cosima von Bonin piece in the corner. She's a Cologne-based artist who often makes soft sculpture that is humorous and witty and dry and these are two oysters that sit staring at us and staring at everyone else's sculpture. So in the tall gallery, uh, we entered to uh, a very awkward scenario with some sloping walls which were already in the gallery that I've echoed and two triangular columns that we've built that become the devices for strapping Kate Lepper's sculptures around. And again, these uh, very brightly colored reclaimed fabric pieces uh, hold remnants of packing foam. And they are in conversation with a Dougie Fields painting that the Arts Council collection have lent us called Stumped, which is a kind of uh, surrealist landscape located within two deco dresses or something like this. And Dougie's work really is pop art that is uh, somehow geometricized and becomes slightly off key and uh, energized because of that. And that leads us on into two sections. On one side we have Plastic Fantastique, who are a collective that varies in size. Uh, at the moment there's five people. They make kind of punk uh, rituals, I suppose I would call them. They're, it's kind of glitter uh, meets punk music meets church or something like this, but it's secular and they've made a series of enormous tarot cards that they're performing with. They're doing a live performance at the opening and then documentation of this performance will stay in the space afterwards. And it's a lot about noise and dissonance, but it's fun and it's satirizing capitalism. They are positioned against a series of works by Nikki de saint Fal, who uh, was an artist working with the Lumpen and her figures of women, which were collectively titled the Nanas, which also would include animals. There's a little camel called Mini Chameau. There's uh, a piece called uh, Je suis une vache suisse. I'm a, a Swiss cow. And these are painted maquettes for larger works that are uh, imbalanced somehow, which is another tenet of the Shonki, and uh, painted plaster. So they're also very fragile surfaces. Tucked away behind Plastic Fantastique in their own realm is Benedict Drew, who has made a new piece for this exhibition called A Dyspraxic Techno. And Benedict's work really takes the language of sound and noise art and expands it into a visual realm using arrhythmia and dissonance and noise and finding visual equivalents for that with projection and text and kind of hiccuping visuals that do things on the offbeat and don't make dystopias as such but somehow try to negotiate the ugly in this world by mirroring it for us and somehow cancelling it out like a noise cancelling machine and a kind of uh, imaginative noise cancelling machine and in the very back room the very tallest gallery we have a series of works by Arakawa and Gins particularly this model of a house they wanted to build called the Inflected Arcade House. And Arakawa and Gins are a duo of architects, uh, a, uh, an American and a Japanese, that were working uh, up until recently. They're both dead now, but they're not very well known even within architecture culture. And their work relates to Hundertwasser. They're placed beside another Hundertwasser curtain. They both thought about the idea of sloping floors and the terrain being a, a thing that could disrupt us from our habits and liberate us to become uh, post-human, actually. They theorized their work heavily by inventing a language for it. And their project as a whole was called Reversible Destiny, by which they meant uh, that architecture could extend our life expectancy. And that might mean going to stay in their hotel in Tokyo for the weekend, which would extend your lifespan by 10 minutes. 
but it might also be living in their bias cleave house, which, like the uh, inflected arcade house, had a landscape that you had to negotiate to change how you walked and ultimately how you thought, and that might affect your immune system. So the relationship between the body and the brain are intrinsically linked in what they do. And they scramble the coordinates of their architecture as a way of scrambling our conceptual coordinates. So they are the uber shonky in a way. And it's exciting for me to be able to somehow incorporate their jargon within my own. So part of shonky is also about uh, a meeting place for jargon. It's very important that I'm not a curator as such, and I'm an artist and coming to curating as an artist, and that distinguishes the project in certain key ways. So initially, this idea of theorising shonkiness grew out of my own research within my doctoral studies, where I had made an installation called Alien Sex Club that deployed the, the crumbling and the fragile within a series of cardboard walls as a way of allowing visitors to the show to understand how something was made. And that's certainly something that someone like Justin Favela would adhere to, in that if you can understand how something is made, you can interpret it better. That extends to the whole curatorial approach I've taken in terms of trying to bring hospitality into what I do. Often I've used bars as a device for conjoining things spatially and conceptually and as a way of allowing the dissemination of ideas to happen live. I don't want people to come to an exhibition and feel baffled. Things aren't baffling, things are quite straightforward ultimately and art galleries shouldn't be in intimidating places, they should be generous spaces and, and hopefully this is a kind of cornucopia that you come to. I will be hosting the bar at the opening in costume, dressed as a fool, and a lot of my thinking around zaniness is informing this show. Zaniness really being a way of describing the precariousness that we all feel within uh, late capitalism and have to become jacks of all trades, but also that as host of this exhibition, you are empowered to ask questions of me. You can be the clever one and I can be the fool and everything is inverted and that playfulness extends through the way we've hung things and combined things and somehow shonky is also functional even though it's highly decorative and about ornamentation I also want people to enjoy this in a very deep way because I think that the things that excite me visually are the things that are just on the edge of wrong or, or right or sweet or sour and you might want to you might come to the show and go not sure if that's quite right or not and that's a good feeling